Hi, welcome to this episode of Anatomy Guy. Today we'll be discussing the deep back and the spinal cord. As you get ready for prepar preparation for this one, we'll be basically going through six objectives with the true back muscles. And then we'll have some objectives related to the um, laminectomy, where we'll look at the spinal cord inside the vertebral column. First thing you're going to be doing is reflecting some of the superficial back muscles and the intermediate muscles that we've already looked at. And we'll be pulling those laterally. Then we'll look at the identification of a muscle up a little higher in the neck, deep to trapezius, which is going to be the splenius capitis. We'll move from there to identifying the more superficial of the true back muscles, which would be the erector spinae group. And there will be three groups that you should have identified within that set, which would be the iliocostalis, longissimus, and the spinalis muscles. And that will be from lateral to medial. Then we'll look briefly at the deeper group of true back muscles called the transversospinalis muscles. And those muscles are going to be uh, seen as a group, and we're not going to worry about the subgroups within them, including the semispinalis multifidus and the rotatories. Both of these true back muscles are innervated by dorsal rami, remember, and they're going to extend the column bilaterally and cause rotation unilaterally. Finally, if you have time in your school to do the suboccipital dissection, it's a great dissection. Unfortunately, most schools have lost the time for that dissection, so we're going to be skipping the suboccipital dissection altogether. In this first step, we're going to reflect the superficial and intermediate back muscles laterally. As you're reflecting the superficial and the intermediate back muscles, there's a couple fascias and a small set of muscles that I want you to be aware of. So let's go to the cadaver and take a look as we reflect the trapezius out of the way, the latissimus dorsi out of the way, and the rhomboids out of the way. Now we can see some fibers in the upper back here and here, and some fibers in the mid back here and here. Those are the serratus posterior superior and inferior muscles. And the fascias that can run across those can be a little bit confusing. So the fiber directions of these muscles are running in this pathway, and here, in this pathway, making a diamond shape across both sides. We want to reflect those out of the way as well. So you may need to cut through those and then move some of this superficial elect, uh, uh, connective tissue out of the way. Also, even though we've reflected latissimus dorsi out of the way, we have some leapfrogging fibers of the thoracolumbar fascia that we'll also want to pull through See if you can save some of these dorsal rami, and then pull some of the loose connective tissue away. Now we'll get a look at those longitudinally running muscles of the deep back. In this next step, we're going to be identifying the splenius capitis muscle, which means bandage. And it's going to be just deep to the upper uh, fibers of the trapezius, with a few fibers down towards the middle. Up towards the base of the skull, we can see the skin has been reflected away as, long, as well as trapezius muscle. And here is the splenius capitis as the muscles run up towards either side, towards the mastoid process. And they act as a bandage. So splenius actually means bandage muscle. In this step, we'll look at the identification of the more superficial of the true back muscles. That's going to be a group called the erector spinae. And it has three subgroups within it, the iliocostalis, the longissimus, and the spinalis. Now that we've removed the superficial and intermediate back muscles, we can now move in and look at the erector spinae. First, here you can see the spinous processes. Then lateral to those on either side, you can see the erector spinae muscles, which are true back muscles innervated by dorsal rami, which you can see coming through them. The first set, more lateral, is the iliocostalis. And you can see the attachments to the ribs. The intermediate group is going to be the longissimus. And then the one that's most medial is going to be the spinalis muscles, ILS. In this stage, we're identifying the deeper group of transversal spinalis muscles. And we're not going to worry about the subgroups. When you go into the deeper group, we'll pan down towards the multifidus region. And you can see fibers running on the inside. Notice how if we put this set of fibers 
running from the spinous processes out and down, together we get an inverted V. If we come out and look at the erector spinae muscles, you can see how they run in a V formation. So they're attaching to the spinous processes and running out laterally and up. Now for the major dissection objectives regarding the laminectomy so that we can take a look at the spinal cord. It's a very interesting dissection. We're going to start out by first cutting across all of those true back muscles in the lower lumbar region and then we're going to pull them laterally um, from the lower six thoracic regions and the lumbar regions so that's going to expose the lamina of each of those vertebrae that we're going to cut later. Remember, good mem memory tool is that if you don't know what it is, don't cut it. Then we're going to use the chisel or an autopsy saw to cut across the lamina bilaterally all the way through those lower six thoracic and the lumbar vertebrae, but not getting into the sacrum. After we've cut across those, we'll cut through the interspinous ligaments and the ligamentum flava and then we'll remove that segment across all of those lamina and we'll expose the vertebral canal by removing the vertebral arches. We're going to then open up the dura to observe the different meningeal layers including the dura, the arachnoid, and the pia which will be tight against the spinal cord itself. We'll see some of the features of the spinal cord and then finally after identifying all of those things, including the cauda equina, phylum terminale, all the denticulate ligaments, the dorsal root ganglia, as well as some of the peripheral nervous components that are going to be necessary for the rest of your medical career. In the first step, we'll cut across those true back muscles and pull them laterally, and then we'll expose the lower six thoracic uh, lamina, as well as the um, vertebral processes. For this step, to landmark where we're going to remove the muscles and do the laminectomy, I'm going to lift the shoulder back into anatomical position, which will expose around the T6 level, and we're going to want to go down towards the iliac crest. So all of this muscle needs to be pulled out of the way. We're going to take a sharp scalpel, drive down along the spinous processes as tight as you can until you can feel the bone. Come all the way up along that bone, right to the mark that we would made from the scapula. We're going to continue to push that muscle along the side. And then at this lower border, we're going to cut across the muscle. Remember not to cut into the abdomen. And we're just going to scoop all of this muscle out laterally. Now we've bilaterally cleaned up the true back muscles out of the groove between the lamina, transverse process, and spinous process. By cutting them in the inferior region and cutting across, pulling them laterally, you can see how it opens up the areas across from each lamina. Here you can see lamina lamina, and lamina. We've had the ribs cleaned out laterally, which you can see right here. There's our twelfth rib, actually right here. And that's going to take us across into the lumbar vertebrae. And this area, these lumps that you can see here are the facets. Then we're going to use a chisel and we're going to cut across the lamina bilaterally. So we're going to be removing lamina from the lower thoracic all the way down to the lower lumbar regions. And in each of these areas, the lamina have a different angle. So as you take your chisel, you want to make sure that you get the appropriate angle for each area. You have to be a bit more vertical in the thoracic region, and you want to make sure that you're between the spinous processes which is here in red, and the transverse process, which is here on the second finger. And we're going to move in on down to the lumbar region. And rather than feeling 
transverse processes at that point, if we zoom into this area, you'll start to see that the lumpy portions that you'll be feeling and seeing after you've removed the muscle is going to be the facet joint. So you have to be medial to that facet joint. And again, you'll want to come in on a little bit of an angle so that you don't just take off the facet joint and end up not in the vertebral canal. On the same side of things, you don't want to come across at too sharp of an angle, otherwise you'll simply take off the spinous process. As you're getting into the chisel uh, aspect of this dissection, sometimes it's a good idea to hold your chisel along the lamina as well. Before you start taking things out, give each spinous process a wiggle to make sure that you've freed it on both aspects. Come on, Scully. I said right here. Thank you. We'll cut across the interspinous ligaments and ligamentum flava to remove the segments of the vertebral arch. That way we'll have a look into the vertebral canal. Look and clean up a lot of these areas and you can see the interspinous, supraspinous, and ligamentum flava ligaments. Okay. If you need a little extra. All right. Then we're going to open up that dura to see the spinal cord itself as well as the layers of the meninges. So as we start working the pieces out, you can apply a little lateral or upward pressure with the tip of the chisel. Be cautious that you don't go too deep and project into the spinal cord itself. And if you feel any resistance, you may need to add an additional depth to it. Be careful with scoliosis as well. It's really important that you follow the spinous processes and dig them out along the spine as opposed to getting off track like you can do with the scoliotic curvature. Remember, while you're pulling out these bony processes, you must be very careful of the sharp bony pieces. Uh, this is one lab where people will oftentimes poke themselves with uh, a shard of bone or a chisel. So be cautious and be safe. So we've removed the vertebral spinous processes and lamina that have been cut away. And now you can see the vertebral canal with the dura. Down in here, this would be the thecal sac region. And the spinal cord proper will end at the L1, L2 level. To open the dura, now we're going to just grab a little tiny piece of the dura itself, do a T-shaped nick across the top. And the dura is quite strong in this, level, in this direction. And then if we take a forcep, stick it just into that hole with a little bit of upward pressure. And now you can use scissors or a scalpel and pull straight down. You don't even have to cut it. It'll pull straight on down. Now, with that opened up, we can see the spinal cord with the spinal arteries and veins showing through. And you can zoom in a little bit closer into this area here. Great. And what you can see is the termination of the spinal cord proper with all of this shiny membranous material, which is the arachnoid matter. And finally, make sure that you've located the cauda equina, phylum terminale, the denticulate ligaments, a couple dorsal root ganglia, and some of the peripheral nerves, which would include, include the dorsal rami and ventral rami. With the dura reflected off, we can now see the spinal cord proper. And we can even see the arachnoid matter. If we give a little tug to this tissue here, you can see the glisten. And then you can see the dorsal roots coming across and the ligamentum uh, 
denticulate ligament coming across right here. As you follow that down, you start to run out of spinal cord at this level, which is going to be the L1, L2. So this is the conus medullaris. That's going to taper on down through the phylum terminale, seen here, slightly whiter than the rest of the nerve roots and rootlets. And they're sitting in the thecal sac, which is full of CSF. And then here we can see a pair of dorsal root ganglia. And the dorsal root ganglia, notice, are at the level of the intervertebral foramina. So if you want to see those, you have to get a little bit of a wider view than the typical view here, where you can see the facet joints of the lumbar vertebrae these nerve rootlets coming together and there's two of them heading out towards the dorsal root ganglia through the dura mater. The portion that are dorsal to the ligamentum is going to be dorsal or sensory information and the nerve roots that are ventral to the denticulate ligament are going to be motor. Here's a few pearls and some problems that you might run into on this dissection. First, you want to remember to look at the deep back muscles and know that they're innervated by dorsal rami. Definitely want to identify the erector spinae and the transversal spinalis group by their fiber direction, with the erector spinae being V-shaped and the transversal spinalis group being as inverted V. Look really closely at the skeleton as you get into the laminectomy because you really have to understand the angle of the um, chisel or the saw that you'll be using so that you don't cut across the wrong structures and have either a narrow or an ineffective opening. If you cut through the transverse processes and don't cut through the lamina, then you, you'll get nowhere and you won't see the spinal cord at all. And finally, you want to review all the parts of the CNS and the PNS. Those basic features are going to stay with you, and you'll have to have them at the tip of your fingers throughout the rest of your medical career. That concludes our deep back muscles and our vertebral canal dissection, looking at the spinal nerves as well as the spinal cord itself. Join us next time on The Anatomy Guy. Ow! Sorry. Just kidding, I have no nerves.